So welcome back. What we're going to move on to now is away from the classroom we're going to go on to firing the rifle. Now the first thing we need to do is prepare the weapon for firing and then also we're going to bore sight. So today we're going to conclude with bore sighting. It's a misunderstood uh, but simple technique which almost guarantees that when you actually move on to the zeroing that your target you're going to fire it you're going to hit on that target somewhere it won't be precise but in able to hit the target that you're aiming at and then obviously the aim of zeroing is to produce a series of shots which is known as a group and then by taking a center back group we move it to the point of aim so we move a point of impact center of the group to the point of aim and then we adjust the sights until we are hitting the point of impact as the point of aim and then the weapon is zeroed. But today we're going to go as far as bore sighting. So just to recap then on preparation for live fine. So we've already off camera, I've checked the scope, I've checked the screws, I've checked nothing's been damaged in transit from A to B. I've also used a bore snake. I've done a visual inspection of a bore and I've used a bore snake just to pull through to make sure that uh, we've got a conditioned cold bore. Now there is a thing called a cold bore shot. Um, and it is a, an important phenomenon for snipers. In essence, the first round that passes through a clean cold bore leaves a little bit of fouling and it warms the bore up. So what you normally find is the first shot or two shots would normally be different to the follow on shots that, that come after it. So quite often we'd fire a couple of warning, uh, warming shots and then we'd fire the actual main three round group. So normally it's two shots and then we'd switch straight to a three round group and we're going to do that shortly. Now we're using the multi cow again the top tip with the with the quick release system is just to use your torque wrench and double check that the bell hasn't come loose so we're just going to put that in and just check nothing's moved in transit. There we go and that's fine. There we go it's slipping so that's good so the torque is up. A visual check on the weapon concludes everything's good to go. So for bore siding, what we need to do now is gain access to the, the bore and the scope. So we need to take up the bolt. On the AI, remember all we do is swing the butt to the side and take the bolt out. What we need to do now is line up through the bore under the target. The target we can use is a steel target. So I'm going to use this sandbag to help me. I'm looking through the ball and getting it onto the target when I want to shoot at. There's a little bit of fiddling around initially until we're on. Here's one we didn't prepare early anyway. Now the key is to get this precise. So through the ball, and you'll see this in a minute for yourself, I'm actually looking right at the target and the target is in the centre of the ball. It's a little bit fiddling around just to get it exactly precise. Nearly there. A bit of fiddling around but it's important to get this right. Okay so I can see the target. I'm looking through the ball. It's a circle. In the middle of that circle is my target what I aim at. Now without touching anything I need to look through the scope and see what I'm aiming. So we're pretty close now. I just need to make a slight adjustment. So trying to hold the weapon still, you could even use some someone to help you do this. We just need to adjust. We're going to move so the crosshairs okay. So what I can see now, through the bore target is framed as explained. Through the scope the crosshairs are going straight through my target that I want to shoot at and I'm looking the point of aim for both is the same. I'm not too concerned what it's saying on the on the elevation drum or deflection drum at the minute. The key is to get that level and like I said just to recap the reason it's important because when we shoot down there we don't want to waste a load of shots and fire at nothing when you go when you fire a group and go down there, there's nothing on the paper so we're bore siding first to get everything on to fine tune this now obviously we've checked the spirit level is good 
they want to get the weapon not canted and as you can see it's it's flush and everything's good to go so what we're going to do then we're going to put the bolt back in and then we're going to fire two warming shots just to warm the barrel up and foul the barrel then we're going to fire three shots to conclude and to prove the bore sighting So again, as, as discussed, the important things about setting up the rifle for firing. So the things to remember are the sights, make sure the alignment and the aiming is correct. Making sure the rifle is pointing naturally at the target without any undue physical disturbance. So we're not having to move it. Making sure the weapon is not being uh, influenced in any way. And the, and the key to a long range shooting today, particularly in the military, is that as you can see the weapon is dead flat this is the point about the bipod yesterday the lower you can get the bipod the more stable the rifle is the key to these long range kills that you've read about uh, and you've heard that snipers are generally making more and more of is because the weapon is like this and now instead of the old-fashioned technique where i'm holding the rifle perhaps with a sling fitted breathing and the rifle is moving up and down i'm molding my body around the rifle so the rifle is forcing me into a low profile position. Okay, that's good. So what we're going to do, we're going to take five rounds of subsonic. It's a 200 grain projectile, as you're probably aware. We're going to fire two warmers and then we're going to fire three shots to prove we're on the target. Being subsonic, there's no requirement for air, air defenders on this at all. Okay, so safety catch is applied. I'm just going to talk through the first shot. So remember, I've made sure my alignment is correct. And I'm going to start my breathing cycle. Remember to breathe in, breathe out. And we can do this as many times as you need. Remember, when you breathe out on the exhale, then we look at releasing the air out and then find the shot within a few seconds of letting the air out. If you leave it too long, we need to repeat the cycle again. Remember, safety is on, but we've got a two-stage trigger. We take the trigger back, hold it, we breathe in, breathe out, and then we squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Remember, to recap, very important for that detail. Tip of the finger is what we're putting the, the trigger back with. Okay, let's go for it. What I'm doing here, I'm just checking the new rifle, just checking the uh, base of the round, the primer, and just checking for any damage on the cartridge itself. We, we cover this later when we talk about maintenance, cleaning, and fault finding. Okay, that's our two warm-up shots. So I need to make a very slight adjustment, even on a bore sight. Remember, bore sight is a crude method, but a working method to get us on. And I'm going to tadge low, so I'm just going to move the sight. Two ways of doing this. One is obviously to know what each click is and apply the clicks. For this, I'm going to use the old shotgun method, where I'm going to look at the impact, which is low. I'm going to hold the weapon dead still. I'm going to turn the turret to make the crosshair go to my impact. Just going to fine tune it a touch. There we go. Okay, so we want to just do three rounds and all three need to be on this target which is about the size of a six inch circle. 
which is really the sort of group and ability of a subsonic at 100 metres. There we go. So we just unload the rifle. Remember, normal safety precautions, we're checking inside, checking up the bore. Once we're happy, best drill is to fire off the action. And for range, safe range practice, because it's not raining at the minute, we'll leave a bolt to the rear. Of course, a place like Busy you would be required to put a flag in there so that you know the weapon is safe. Okay, so there we are bore sighting. <laughs> 